Hello, and welcome to Hedgehog Storytime, where I read my weird original fiction. The following story is part of the Mayhem Cerebrum Project, linked to the playlist in the description below. Yes, you have to read them all. No, that is not a request. It's part two of Flora's backstory. I'm excited. Are you excited? There's Cowl in this one, too. I like Cowl. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, here is Girl with One Eye, Part 2. Flora was worried. Worried about this last heist, and worried about Izzy. Deep down, she had a sneaking suspicion that Izzy's plans might not be the same as hers in the end. Yet, what could she do? It took an entire week to prepare— Casing the grounds, bribing a former maid to tell them about the security, acquiring invitations to a party Thornwell was hosting to get a good look around the inside. Unfortunately, they couldn't hope to do a seduce and skill steam like they might have usually done as their target had lost his wife only a few months before, but that was fine. Flora didn't like those anyway. She always got a little jealous, and that distracted her. Finally, the last big night arrived. They picked Sunday, as some of the guards had off that night, so their windows to move would be bigger. Izzy was in charge of the outside. Most of the security was there, so she'd memorized the layout and had spent the last week observing the guards' patterns. Well, it's a little random, unfortunately, she admitted, but they tend to stick close to the perimeter, so if we take a chance there, we should be fine. As it turned out, she was mostly right, but she got caught off guard by the new addition of a German shepherd near the entrance. It pricked up its ears from too far away for comfort as they approached. All right, then, Flora sighed. Plan B. She'd been in charge of the interior. Initially, she'd been saving it for a backup escape route, but it looked like they were going up the laundry chute. It was a flaw in the house's security that Thornwell obviously hadn't thought about. The servants' quarters were an external building a short ways away from the main house, which was where the laundry was done, so a chute had been built leading into the small room leaning up against the main building. It was usually locked, but that was no problem for the two of them. This meant, unfortunately, that they'd probably be using the chute for garbage on the way out. Though it was a tough climb, the chute was thin enough for them both to shimmy their way up and out. Flora tumbled out into the small storage closet and helped Izzy up after her. Checking her watch, the time was 12.35. They should still have ten more minutes before the guards made another round. That didn't mean that they weren't grateful for the old, heavy carpets or didn't look furtively around every dimly lit corner. After all these years, all the people she'd robbed, Flora still couldn't believe anyone could live in a house this big. But it wasn't the house they were concerned with. It was what was underneath it. The vault that contained Thornwell's collection. At the party they'd attended, no one had been allowed inside the vault that took up most of the basement level of the house. They definitely knew where the entrance was, however. Flora's breath caught as they trooped down the somewhat grandiose stairs and the massive iron door of the vault came into view. Both women had a long history of opening vaults, but Flora had slightly more patience than Izzy did, so she was the one who approached the door while Izzy watched the staircase. Her hand shook a little as she approached the wheel. This was the scary part of the plan. The maid they'd bribed had given them a code, but they had no idea whether it had been changed or not since then. The crank ticked far too loudly for its own good. If she had to try more than once, a guard would no doubt notice them. She entered the first number, then the second— Flora stopped breathing entirely as the last digit slowly clicked into place. And then... The door swung open. Izzy turned as it creaked, and they both rushed in. Closing the door would take time and cause more noise, so they would have to be quick. Despite the time crunch, they both paused for half a second as they entered the room. First of all, it was enormous and decadent. The walls were ornately carved wooden panels, and the floor was filled with antique bookshelves and cases. But they couldn't stop long. They began their search. Luckily, Thornwell had placed his new acquisition on display very prominently, so it was less than a minute before Izzy signaled to Flora. Very gently, she removed the glass top and handed it to Flora, for underneath lay their prize, a small wooden box. Just the little loan was studded with several green and purple stones. Once it was in her hands, Flora replaced the lid and made to leave, but Izzy didn't follow her. "'What are you doing?' Flora hissed. We might as well get a good idea of what's inside, make sure it's worth selling. What are you talking about? Flora frowned. We're supposed to deliver it to our client. It's our last gig. Izzy held the box away from her, grinning slyly. We might as well make some extra profit. 
That wasn't the plan. So what? Give me the box, Izzy. No, you're the one who wants to retire, so I'll be damned if I don't do it on my own terms. Izzy scowled at her. Jesus Christ, is that what this is about? I know you didn't really want to, but what kind of suicidal bullshit is this? I have no idea what you're talking about. You figure if you sell it on the black market, then either Athane or Thornwell will track down the seller, and you'll go down in some ridiculous blaze of glory. It's better than fizzling out into nothing. Flora raised her hands. Okay, this is neither the time nor the place for this. We'll talk when we get back. Just give me the box. Suck rocks. Give me the fucking box! A loud creaking sound stopped both of them in their tracks. The vault door was being pushed open. Flora checked her watch. 12.46. They had taken too long, and the guards had noticed the vault door ajar. They had a matter of seconds. Flora ran to hide, but stopped as Izzy started prying at the box lid again. What are you doing? She hissed. It's a dangerous artifact, right? Izzy continued to yank at it. There's gotta be some way it'll help us. Flora made an aggravated noise at the back of her throat, but grabbed the other side of the box and helped her pull. One of the guards made it through the door and called, Hey! Though he stuck his hand out towards them, there was nothing he could do. After a great deal of grunting, the two managed to open the lid a single inch. Much later, Flora would come to realize their mistake. They hadn't been informed just what the thing they were dealing with was, so they had assumed that the box was a vessel to contain it. Obviously, they were wrong. The box itself was the danger. As soon as its lid was cracked, it flew open the rest of the way of its own accord. Within the box, emerging from its interior, were misty tendrils of green and purple. As she felt them begin to reach and wrap around her, Flora struggled, trying to replace the lid, but it was no use. Something indescribable made her cease her struggling, and both she and Izzy were pulled into the box and through. On the other side, Flora couldn't breathe, could barely see for all the green and purple. Thoughts like where she was and what had happened were obliterated by a sudden, all-consuming pain. It felt like she was being crushed from the inside out, folded in half over and over until she couldn't be perceived. Out of the corner of her clouded vision, Izzy was floating. Maybe she was screaming. Flora couldn't tell. Izzy! She croaked, reaching for her, and Izzy reached back. But something was wrong, and Flora only caught air. Izzy's hand was gone, crumpled up into an indistinguishable shape. I'm sorry. Izzy's voice reached her as a whisper. I'm a selfish bitch. Flora wanted to tell her to stop it, stop talking like she was about to die, but all that came out was one single, no. Her lungs were almost crushed. I love you. Izzy managed before her mouth was twisted into a shape incapable of speech. For one second, one of her beautiful blue eyes remained, staring at her with pleading regret. Flora wanted to scream, to tell her to come back, to not leave her, but her mouth was also gone. And then she vanished entirely. Something was wrong. Flora couldn't feel her body. She was still there, but she felt like she was dead. Maybe the guards had really caught them after all, and this was hell. But that wasn't right. If this was hell, then Izzy should still be here. So why was she still alive? Well, well, said a voice, one that she thought she might just recognize. Looks like you've gotten yourself into a right pickle, eh, love? <laughs>